Okay. Close my door so you can't also hear my three-year-old on her iPad out there. Um, so hi everyone. Um, it's 10 o'clock, so we're gonna get started. Um, I'm Sarah Gregory, and today we are talking. Um, our presentation is Let's Get Digital. So that's the Olivia Newton John reference, which there's a reason why I put this GIF in here. We're gonna talk about this again later. Um, but we're gonna look at some digital strategies that we can use to support um, AAC learning. So this isn't just AAC teletherapy, but how we can use digital um, tools and materials, both in person and then, of course, um, through teletherapy. So I quickly have my disclosures that I work for the Ithaca City School District. I um, have a very, very small private practice. I sometimes get income and honorariums from speaking engagements, sometimes receive codes to trial therapy products and tools. I'm a member of ASHA, and I'm also a member of the Special Interest Group 12, which is, of course, the AAC SIG. So as I kind of mentioned uh, already what we're going to be doing, we're going to be looking at some AAC therapy activities that we're using it both in person and virtually. Um, we'll talk about the benefits of using digital materials. So um, why do we still want to use digital materials even after we're transitioning away from teletherapy? Um, and also identify some tools that can be used to create digital materials mostly for free. Um, so this is kind of a short session. We have 45 minutes. Um, so I'll try to leave time for questions, but I also kept a lot of content in my slides. Um, so if we, if there's anything that doesn't get answered, feel free to put stuff in the chat. I'll try to, I have it on my side monitor here. I'll try to keep an eye on it. Um, but if anything comes up after the session that you have questions about, or if I share a resource and forgot to link it for some reason, um, I will get that to you. And I just realized that I forgot to make a bit.ly link for my slides, um, but I'll drop the slides into the chat. Um, so if anything comes up after this, please feel free to reach out to me. This is where you can find me on social media. I really, really love connecting with other people who are passionate about AAC. Um, I share a lot of these ideas, similar ideas from my presentation, like therapy ideas. Um, on Instagram, I have a YouTube channel that I haven't updated in a while. That's if you're doing teletherapy, it's mostly teletherapy related. Um, and sometimes I make random videos on TikTok. So that's where you can find me. This is not the right slide deck. Um, I presented this session, a two hour version of this session at Isaac over the summer. So I edited it a little bit and I forgot to change the bit.ly link. So I apologize for that, but you know what? This is recorded. So if anybody does wanna grab that slide deck, it'll have all, most of these slides and then also like double <laughs> the slides. Um, but I will also get these slides to Mike so he can link them in, um, in the materials. So for our agenda, talking digital activities being used in person, cause I'm thinking if everybody wanted to put in the chat, are you doing teletherapy or tele learning still virtual learning or are you mostly back in person? My district is pretty much all back in person, but then I also have a, a couple clients I see privately through teletherapy. So I am doing both, but mainly in person. We're gonna talk about engagement and how important that is in supporting AAC learning. Um, then we're gonna look at some tools and some ready-made resources. Okay, so in person, but also virtual learning. Um, so of course, if you're, doing virtual learning, you know how important digital activities are. But now that a lot of us are returning back in person, do we still need these activities? So this was something, especially at the very beginning of the pandemic, when I was like making an account with boom cards and like spending money on materials. And I was like, am I even going to use this when we go back to school? Um, and so I at first was a little bit hesitant to really learn about digital tools or to buy digital tools. And then I pretty quickly realized there's so many benefits to these digital activities. And I'm, we've been back in school for three weeks and I don't think I've used a physical material. Pretty much everything I've been doing is on my computer. Um, so I do believe that digital materials are here to stay because anything that we did on our computer that we used during teletherapy, you can of course pull that up on your computer within a session. Um, a lot of these things can be pulled up on an iPad. I pretty much make everything in Google Slides. That's like my happy place. Um, 
And so I'll make a Google slide deck and then just pull it up on my iPad and interact with it that way. I also like bring my laptop to sessions and let's see, this is my setup this year. So this is a picture of, from an activity that I did this week um, where you can see I brought in my extra monitor so that I can have a nice big screen to be doing activities with my students. Um, and so it's just, it just has been really nice because I've cultivated all these digital resources. And so now I have lots and lots of activities. You can see my space is a little crowded. I don't have a ton of room to store a lot of physical materials. I also switched from, um, I guess I didn't say this, my role in my district is that I'm part-time uh, SLP and have a direct caseload. And then part-time I do assistive technology pre-K through 12 for the whole district. This year I switched after doing five years of pre-K for my direct caseload, I'm now in high school and I really don't have any materials for my high school students. So this, I've just sort of been making it up as I go along and using my computer for everything. This activity was with a student who I work with who uses Proloquo to go. And as when he came back to school, he has really been stimming on the phrase dog poop bag. And there's a girl in his class that gets really annoyed at that and keeps like yelling at him and saying, stop saying that. And so then he says it even more. So we decided to lean into it. And I said, all right, come into my office for your speech session. And if that's what you want to talk about, then let's write a book about it. So he wrote this whole story about dog poop and like a fairy godmother comes in and is like picking up different people's like after people's dogs. It was really, really funny. He really loved it. And this is something that, well, I'm going to make the point that one thing I love about digital materials is that they, you can so easily customize them to whatever your student is interested in. When I started this school year, never in a million years would I think that this would be a therapy activity I would be doing, but this is what my student was interested in. It's what they wanted to talk about. I gave them half an hour to talk about it. And then he really did stop saying it a little bit when he went back to class. Um, so if I was, you know, if this was me two years ago, I would think like, I don't have any games or resources or materials that I could even like accommodate this interest with. But now I know that all I need is Google image search and my favorite Google slides. And we can pretty much make an activity around absolutely anything. Um, so when we're looking at digital materials and kind of like what's good, what's not, um, Lauren Anderson and I presented a session for Closing the Gap last year. And these were sort of the three things we came up with to evaluate our digital materials or really any materials that we're using with our students. So we really wanted to, materials to be targeted to student interests and preferences. So I love using resources like Tar Heel Reader, where there's just gonna be books on lots and lots of subjects. So we might not find something about dog poop bag, but maybe we're finding something about dogs um, or things like that, where there's just like a huge library that we can access pretty instantaneously. Number two is we really wanna be able to maximize humor and laughter for our students or learners and also for ourselves. This is something that Lauren is amazing at and she talks a lot about is making learning fun. And I understand that not every aspect of every day is going to be fun. But for that example that I just shared, we, me and my student, we really had a fun half hour. We laughed a ton. Um, and he used his device so much to use a variety of different language um, to, to write the story because, you know, we were putting in characters. We were going different places in the stories. Um, so once he started having fun, he really was expanding a lot more on what he was, what he wanted to say on his device. Um, and then number three is, as I mentioned, we want to be responsive to student engagement levels and shift gears when attention wanes. So through the time of me doing teletherapy with all of my students, I really, really understood the importance of engagement, where when I was in person, I of course hope that I was engaging them and making fun activities, but I think it's a little bit easier when someone's attention wanes to kind of pull them back when you're in person. When you're on the computer, if they're not into what you're doing, they can just leave. And um, there's, there's nothing that we can do about it. Um, so somebody says they can't access the slide. So I'm gonna keep talking and uh, make sure that you can all get this. Okay, so um, we really wanna pay attention to whether or not our students are interested in what we're doing. And if they're not interested, that's 
okay, may, it's up to us on our end um, to make a shift to create an activity that's going to be interesting to them. So here's an example of some, so I told you I love slides. It's free, it's easy, it's so customizable. So one of my students um, really, really likes Winnie the Pooh and he also is really interested in Star Wars. And so um, he, his mom shared that he has like Winnie the Pooh toys and Star Wars toys and that he likes to play with them all together. Um, and so I was like, that's so cool. We could write a story about that. So we have, I think maybe like five stories of Winnie the Pooh and Star Wars. And um, it just, it really helps like his imagination come alive. And he, like, it just is so fun. I put him in the stories too, so that he can be doing things and saving people. Um, and so again, I would never have thought to put these things together if I didn't have access to these digital resources, like how could I really combine these interests to make something so motivating? I could of course do a Star Wars activity, I could do a Winnie the Pooh activity, but it might not be as motivating as what we came up with here. Um, we also want to maximize humor and laughter. So this is just an example of that point number two. Let me tell you what we have today. I didn't find a football clip, but did you watch football yesterday? Did you? No. So I actually didn't watch football yesterday either, but we could find a clip from one of the games yesterday. We could watch football. The new thing I made is about feelings. So we're going to talk about some feelings. I also have on there that Star Wars thing with the gifts. So we were saying that was watch, right? So we could watch the Star Wars things. Let me remind myself what the other thing was. Oops, that's a preview of what, what I made. So I made something with WWE people. I thought you were gonna like that. So we can either, and we're gonna talk about feelings with that act. Okay, so the point of me showing this, I know it's really small. You can't really see um, his video, my student's video, um, but he was like throwing his head back in laughter. He, um, cause he, I didn't know that he liked the WWE and his he, mom, like when she told me the stuff he was interested in, he said he didn't want me to know that for some reason. And then he did share that. So I said, oh, maybe next week we can do something that has to do with the WWE. I don't really know anything about that. So I just took pictures from Google image. Um, and he was so, he just thought it was so funny that I had put together this activity and again, was like leaning into his interest where this is something I really am only able to do in a digital way, right? Like, I don't even know if I could walk into Target and buy something, um, that has to do with the WWE. So we can really, let me tell you what we, um, and here's an example of being responsive to engagement. So this is just another example of here's like my student in here in the book. And we're just putting in some different like comments and things like that. And um, like really being excited about how we're writing about things like, oh no, um, and getting upset about the fight and things like that. And so adding in things that are interesting, you know, trying to come up with things that are funny are normally going to be engaging. Um, and so we're going to talk really quickly about why engagement's even important. Um, so this is not from therapy. These are my kids and my nieces. Um, but you can see that when we have a student who like these girls on the left, they're really engaged in this little like sticker activity. And if I were trying to teach them some new language skills and I pushed into this activity that they decided they're really into, you can imagine they'd probably work with me on it, right? If I was trying to teach them specific vocabulary about like vets or something, um, they would probably get really into it because it would help support the game that they're already engaged in. Now we see little Sage over here on the other side and she is not engaged. I gave her macaroni and cheese and pizza for dinner and she's like super grumpy. She doesn't want to eat it even though those are two of her favorite foods. If I want to do a language activity with Sage, even though I planned what I thought was her favorite dinner and if I wanted to say, oh, let's work on some comments. It's yummy, it's delicious. She would not be doing that with me, right? So we really want to try to create settings where our students are going to be engaged because that's when they're going to be more 
open to learning from us. So I really feel that these digital tools can support engagement because they're so easily customizable. We can quickly adapt. So if a student in the middle of a session just tells me I'm into the WWE, I don't even have to like order something on Amazon and wait two days. I can just make something there in the moment and we can access materials for really specific interests. So beyond just what you can buy in a store, what's available on Amazon, um, we can really follow our students lead because that's where we're going to get the most engagement and reflecting on, you know, my practice previous to doing teletherapy and previous to the pandemic, I really wasn't able to be that responsive to my students um, because I limited myself to what sort of I had in my office. Um, and sometimes with students who are emergent in communicating, if they share an interest, we can, of course, talk about it. We can have a conversation about it. Um, but I think having images, like having an activity that helps us have a shared understanding of what we're both talking about can be really helpful for students who are still emergent. Um, so this just comes back to one of my favorite quotes. I love this from Laura Taylor, that we need to, in our um, AAC teaching, we need to make conversation, relationships, and interest the goal, not teaching AAC. That's so funny. I just said teaching. <laughs> in teaching AAC, we're not teaching AAC. Uh, but that's when we're supporting AAC, um, we aren't just thinking I'm teaching these words. Like I'm going to teach feeling words and that's my only goal. We need to have that relationship. We need to have um, back and forth conversations, make things open-ended, and then that AAC learning is going to happen more naturally. I can't believe I just said that so backwards. Okay, so now look, let's look at some tools. So I love gifts. Again, this is something you can access for free. I get gifts and I put them in Google Slides. Some people will put them in PowerPoint. There's a lot, there's pre-made boom cards that use gifts that I'll show at the end of the session. Um, but I find that kids, um, my students have a lot of fun um, with gifts and they're just super easy to access and make activities around. So here I might find a GIF and then we'll say a word to describe it. Um, here I put AAC icons on here, um, which some of my students might see that and use it as a prompt of what they want to say. They can, of course, I use make this open-ended so they can say whatever they want. Um, and then also another thing I love about digital materials is this is in Google Slides and I'll just share it home to families. And then I have these AAC icons here so that if the parents or caregivers want to also practice using AAC, they'll have like a pathway of how to find the words a little bit more easily. So the way I get GIFs is I use this Chrome extension, um, Giphy. And so it's a free Chrome extension in the web store. I think I probably have it linked. I didn't link it, but you can search that in the web store. And then here it is. Um, and I can, oh, look, here's sign language for good morning. You could search anything. Um, so if your student really likes Star Wars, then you can get um, like a silly GIF and you just drag it in. This is how, how easy it is. Um, let me see. I delete the little word. And then look, you can do whatever you want with it. Present. Um, let me get back, back to where I was. So, oh, this was uh, one that, another example that I had made when I presented at Isaac. And so um, we were talking about like emotions and like, oh, how did you feel about this activity? Did you like it? Or were you more like Johnny? And you're kind of like, oh, I don't really like it. Um, we could move the arrow around. So there's some different things that you could do um, when you're playing around with gifts. If you don't want to make your own, Rachel Madel has um, a boom card GIF activity that I really like. It's a bunch of funny animals. So sometimes I like to make things because I like to make things really, really personalized to my kids. Um, but if you don't want to take the time or you don't, you know, it's the beginning of the year, we still don't know our students super well, um, that this can be a fun thing to get. And sometimes I do choose to save myself time and just just make the purchase instead. So here is an example of using GIFs in therapy. Okay, that's my last one of those Star Wars things. So we could make more of these if you want to look for one. Um, you could help me make some more or we could read the 
Spider-Man book. Do you want to read or do more of the Star Wars? Watch. So do more of the ones we can watch? Okay, so let's go. Let's get another one. Do you want me to look for a specific character this time? Okay, who should we look for? Grogu? Yes, ah, good idea, good idea. Okay. Oh, there he is. What, let me see. Um, oh, this one's funny. We can do a couple different ones of Grogu because he's the best. So what is he doing in this one that we should say? Well, that's what I was thinking. Nice. So let's get set. Take a picture of it. And then we'll remember how to get there next. So this example I'm just showing because sometimes I do pre-make things like it looks like this was like back in December. So like half of it was pre-made, I think. And um, then I, he was interested in the activity. So you don't even have to pre-make anything. I really am not a planner. Um, and which is another reason why I like digital activities because we made like many more gifts together and we put the icon sequences in because that was helpful for his mom. And then I still have this activity saved on my computer. Um, I can share it with you. I should have put a link in here. Um, and I use it with lots of other students. So it also was like a really functional and helpful activity because, and I told him like, oh, I'm gonna use this with some of my other kids that really like Star Wars. Um, so, uh, so you can really do it on the fly, which is nice. And it doesn't have to take, um, a lot of prep. And again, just somebody said, love the engagement. Yes. So as I mentioned before, thinking about humor and interest, not just for your students or for your learners, but also for yourself. I never watched Star Wars. I hope Mike Murata isn't in the room because he would... <laughs> he loves Star Wars. He would hate to hear that. I never watched anything Star Wars until December when I started working with this student. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, like I'll check out Mandalorian. And then I became obsessed with it. So then it's something that we both really like and really my engagement and interest, which is so genuine, helps his engagement and interest. So of course, you're not always going to find something you both agree on, but don't discount things that are also like fun for you too. Um, Here's another uh, one of my favorite tricks is like think back to that Winnie the Pooh Star Wars activity that I made where we're layering images on top of each other. The way that we can do that and make it look not too crazy is by removing the image backgrounds, which is free and super easy. Um, so here is my daughter's favorite movie, Raya and the Last Dragon. Um, and so if I was making an activity for her or somebody else who really liked this, um, I just do a Google image search. I right click and copy, and then go to this website that's remove.bg. And you just paste into the website and it completely removes the image background. I'm not gonna take time to do an example because I have a YouTube video here on how to use remove BG. And I think I give some examples of um, like how to, what activities you could do after you remove image backgrounds. And then unscreen, I'm not talking about in this session, but watch that YouTube video because that's how you can remove image backgrounds and create GIFs of yourself, um, which is super fun. Um, so here's an example of like removing the background of Batman. You can see if I tried to layer that one on um, into a book, it just would look like a little bit messy. And also students, like I do the remove backgrounds with my students. I don't really prep things that have backgrounds disappeared um, because it takes a matter of seconds. And it's also kind of fun um, to watch like it load and then the background disappears. So here's an example of these images layered on top of each other. And then we just wrote a little story about, we went to the playground and saw Raya and talked to is sort of, um, you know, there's so, so much language that we can do around these activities. Um, that was a point I wanted to make back when we were making, and when I was making that Star Wars GIF activity, is that the creation of the materials 
lends itself to really open-ended opportunities for language. If I just had the gifts laid out there, that could be pretty fun, but it's more closed-ended. Like we're making a comment on what we see in the GIF, but as you can see with my student, um, he was picking the characters, choosing how much he wanted to do um, and things like that. Um, so here is um, another thing that I do with, let me see, did I, yes, I have an example. Okay, so this is another thing I like to do with images removed and I'll show you how it works. I won't show you how to make it because here's the link on how to make this activity on my YouTube channel. Um, and there's a bit.ly link for this activity. So Gregory Hyde with capital G, capital H, um, you can get, I don't know, there's maybe like oh, 12 slides that they don't have my kids in them. They're just blank, but they have images that you can move around. So this is the hide and go seek activity. We have to take it out of present. But I could say, all right, let's look for Sage. Where do you think she is? All right, behind the umbrella. Okay, what should we do with the umbrella? Let's move it over. And wow, you found her, there she is. Okay, let's make her go swim in the lake. Um, and so all of these pieces are movable and to make the kids hide, um, it's just kind of how you layer the images and, and make the order. So. Um, watch the YouTube video for how to do that and then download that activity because it's pre-made and it's pretty fun. Um, I love to make books in Google Slides, um, you know, the writing of the book. I could do it as a literacy activity um, where you're opening up the keyboard and we're combining letters to make words. Sometimes I do it just as a language activity where my students are using their symbol-based systems to um, say they want a drink. Um, and again, it's not just the writing of the text, but they're telling me where should we go? They go to a restaurant, who's there? Um, describing the different characters they want. And I'll, I'll do the Google image search and I'm like, okay, which, which Iron Man do you want? And the, my students always try to point and I'm like, I can't see what you're pointing at. So, you know, we ha it's just, again, genuine opportunities for language um, in order to create some of these things. This uh, YouTube icon um, will take you to a, um, a YouTube video of mine where I show you um, kind of about like making, making these books, how to get like, it's pretty easy to get these little like speech bubbles and things like that. So that will give you some more ideas um, if you want more ideas on that. Now we're gonna talk about YouTube videos, which YouTube is one of my favorite things because again, you can, there's so many different things you can search on YouTube. Um, one of my students, he really, in, in our area, I live in upstate New York. We have a lot of like waterfalls and gorges and he's really into hiking. And so um, we just look up YouTube videos of like our local gorges or people hiking in Hawaii and how that looks different than our local waterfalls. Um, so Again, you can't, I don't know if I would find something appropriate on like dog poop bag on YouTube. I actually didn't try that, but a lot of specific interests you can find some activities for on YouTube, maybe not everything. Um, so here's my GIF from the beginning of this presentation. This is Olivia Newton-John in the music video, Let's Get Physical. So I wanted to add a GIF of Olivia Newton-John because it was, that's my, the title for my presentation, Let's Get Digital, was a play on words from this song, okay? So I actually typed in Olivia Newton-John GIF and there really wasn't anything. So this is sort of my specific interest for my presentation. My specific need is that I want this to be a GIF. I don't wanna just play part of the YouTube video. So. How can I do that? Here's the trick. Any YouTube video, you can turn into a GIF. So let's say I'm making a GIF activity, the Star Wars GIF. There's tons and tons of Star Wars GIFs, but my student who really likes to hike and likes waterfalls might be interested in a GIF activity, but if I search on my little Chrome extension, it might not come up. So I can take his favorite waterfall YouTube videos and turn them into short clips that just repeat. Um, and I do that by, I'm gonna play this video. I think we have time to watch this video, um, but you, when you are on YouTube and you have like the URL up there, all you do is type in GIF before YouTube when you're on the video um, and it will take you to this website that's a tool to create the GIF. So let's watch it. 
Here's a really fun trick for making GIFs out of any YouTube video. So for this how-to, I'm just using this video of myself, but um, normally I would do like a character or a show or movie that my student really likes. So I pull up this YouTube video that I want to create a GIF out of and right before for YouTube, I'm just gonna type in GIF and hit enter and it will take you to this site where it has the YouTube video um, in here and you can choose exactly what section of the video you want to be a GIF. So let's I'm sorry. I was trying to make a bitly of the slides really quickly because somebody asked for that and then I just messed this all up. Here's a really fun trick for making GIF to be a GIF out of and right before YouTube, I'm just going to type in GIF and hit enter and it will take you to this site where it has the YouTube video um, in here and you can choose exactly what section of the video you want to be a GIF. So let's do that one. Great. And maybe I want to crop it so I can pick just a specific section of my video. I could make it um, longer or shorter. And then um, when I'm done, I can just click create GIF. We can download it and put it right into our Google Slides. Okay. So I really love that trick. Um, and this video will be in the slides and you can go back and watch it. And I just created a bitly of the slides so I can share that out more easily. Um, so at the, I'll do that at the end of the session. Um, so when we're looking for um, YouTube videos, of course, I'm sure we've all, like I said, my daughter's watching YouTube right now, um, the kids YouTube, because um, I'm sure we've all come across some things on YouTube that were like, oh, this isn't what I want to do in therapy. Um, so it's nice to have a list of videos that you know are going to be a appropriate, be good for eliciting language or that are going to be fun to talk about. So um, again, I already said I don't like to prep. I don't um, really do a ton to prepare for my sessions. It's pretty like fly by the seat of your pants. Um, so Rachel made on her YouTube channel, she has different playlists. So if you're on her channel, like underneath, it'll say like videos, playlists, and you click on those. And she has a few different playlists of animated shorts. This one specifically called animated shorts for communication. Um, it has like 60 videos. So I'll just scroll through this and have um, my students choose what they want. So again, they're in control of what's interesting to them. And I also know that it's going to be um, like a short wordless uh, video that's going to be good for eliciting language. Um, so, so I really like these. And this is something that um, is easy to use. And then you don't have to prep. So here's another activity. I This is just an example. I'm not going to get into this too much, but there's a YouTube video on how I made this activity. And then there's also a download to it. So this is a song from the movie Soul. And what I did was I inserted the YouTube video into slides. And then I made videos of me modeling um, just comments about the song on my students' iPad um, on their system and inserted those videos. So like slide one is the first 30 seconds of the song. Then I model some language. Slide number three is like 30 seconds to one minute. So I formatted it all in Google Slides, which might sound complicated, but I walk you through step-by-step step how to do that in this activity. And so here's an example of what that looks like. Okay, we're going to take a pause to look at some different words. I don't know what I said in this one. Let's see. Oh, I said I like it. I like this song. What do you think about it, Lily? You like the music? Yeah, me too. 
So um, that's just an example of what it looks like. And um, an, an example of me doing it in teletherapy. And again, it's I'm not gonna go through really what um, how I made it because there's a YouTube video for that. So we don't need to take the time. This always happens to me. Um, okay, so another way that I like to use YouTube is on Edpuzzle. So this is a website that is used to um, filter YouTube videos through. So within Edpuzzle, you can search YouTube videos. You can have a video that you really like on YouTube and then paste the URL into Edpuzzle. And what it does, so this is just a video from YouTube called Spring. It's an animated short. It's really cool. It's a little bit creepy. It was a little too creepy for one of my students when I showed it to them. Um, but a friend of mine posted on Instagram, I think that she had used it in speech therapy, not necessarily with someone using AAC. So I went to look it up and somebody had already made it with lamp icons. Um, so it was so amazing. And I, there's a link to this. If you have a student who uses lamp and doesn't mind things that are a little creepy, you get this video. So what you can do is pause the video at specific spots, wherever you want to pause it. And then you could ask a question. Like sometimes people use it as like a quit, like quizzes for students to do independently. Um, but I like to use this note feature where you could just put in AAC icons. Um, I got the, at the idea from for Edpuzzle from Rachel Madel, and she uses it to send um, home to families and we'll just like take a student's favorite song or something and pause it and she'll just give suggestions of the types of language that the family can model. Um, so if you put the AAC icons in there, when I incorporate icons into activities, it's the idea is more to support the person who's supporting the person using AAC. A lot of my students aren't like looking at this and saying what or who that's not, you know, I'm not really trying to give them something to just repeat. Um, but a person who's with them, if, especially if we're doing teletherapy can say, okay, we're gonna, you know, who is walking or who do you think she's gonna find um, and, and model that. So the icons can, can be helpful. And um, here's the link to that on Edpuzzle. And I also, um, Rachel Madel, I don't think I have a YouTube video actually on Edpuzzle. That's why I didn't link it, but Rachel does have one. Um, so here is an example of Edpuzzle in action. So this is one of my students who really likes the song Wheels on the Bus. And you can see each of these teardrops is where the video pauses and we're gonna model language. Oh, they're stopping. Okay, so Sarah, if you see like these little symbols will pop up, so you can just model those words for her if you want when it stops. Okay. Stop. It stopped. Yes. Yes, it stopped. Nice. Okay, so it also like this one I paused a ton. Um, which I think could be annoying for my student of like, I just want to watch this song that I like, but I really wanted to give practice. She had a couple of different babysitters. So I wanted to help the babysitter get a lot of practice on modeling so that then if they're watching TV, she'll have an idea of some of the like core words she could model. She has an idea of where some of those are located so that then she doesn't have to like pause the video every time when um, the student's watching a video. Um, So another thing I love to do on YouTube is read books. So again, this is another um, real benefit, I think, of um, these digital activities and how our com new comfort with uh, digital tools, or at least my new comfort, um, is that when we have students who have a specific interest or say you see a lesson plan online or an activity idea like, oh, there's this thing to go with dragons love tacos, but I don't have that book. I don't have it on my bookshelf. So how am I going to bring it to school um, and do that with my students? Um, what you can do is pretty much any book you can find being read aloud on YouTube and with this little trick. So I know when we're talking digital activities, sometimes people are like, oh, but I don't really want to be doing screen time, my whole therapy session. Um, so I don't necessarily just like push play and listen to this book being read through, I will pause the video. So leave it stopped, leave it paused. And then 
you can use the over arrow on your keyboard. Every time you click it, it pushes the video forward like about five seconds. So like three clicks basically turns the page. So we're not having any sound and it's actually not playing. I'm reading it at my own pace. It's basically just a dig digital access to a book. So leave it paused, the sound is off and I'll just read, okay, Dragon's Love Tacos by Adam Rubin. And then I'm like, click, click, click. And then I can read, I can pause and pause for as long as I need to for my student to say something if they have something to say about the book. Um, and again, pretty much anything you need, you can find on here. If you, um, you know, think about specific interests, like say a student who's really into waterfalls, I don't think I have any books up here about waterfalls, but I'm sure I could find something on YouTube if we wanted to do an, a literacy activity. So I love that. So here are some free resources here. I did get the bright bitly link here. Um, so I have um, just this wakelet that has a bunch of the different activities that I've made. So when you click on the link, it'll force a copy um, so that you can then edit it and it won't edit my the one that I'm using. Um, so feel free to copy any of these, share them out with people. Um, I hope that some of these things are helpful um, in, in your therapy. And um, what else? Uh, I have some Ed Puzzle things in there. Definitely click on that link and there'll be some like good um, therapy activities for you. Um, then there's some paid resources that I like. So I don't do a lot on Boom Learning. For me, it's like really overwhelming. And I'm like, I don't know, like what's good or not good. And I don't want to spend money on it. Um, and so I, uh, these are two Boom stores that I do like to go to, Rachel Madel and then Misty SLP. Both of them specialize in, um, in AAC. So a lot of their activities are like, they're very core word focused um, and things like that. I would say they're for maybe younger learners, but um, but those are some good things if you don't want to be making your own things. I also love these digital games from um, Brooke Dibley at uh, Simply Speaking SLT on Teachers Pay Teachers. These are a little more expensive, but to me, they are worth it. So it's basically these games that you can go and buy like at Target or Walmart um, and like Caribou, you can't even buy anymore. Um, but you can customize them um, with pictures like you could take like the pop the pig game and just put, I don't know, whatever Star Wars characters on there or something if that helps your student become more engaged. Um, so I, I do really like those. Um, I use them with like my students who are working on articulation, like a variety of different things. Um, I also, I'm not going to play this video, but the AAC Language Lab is another paid resource that I think is great for supporting AAC. Um, originally, I think it was more designed like of things that you could print out. I also have a YouTube video on how I take a lot of stuff from the Language Lab and make it, use it as a digital teletherapy activity. Um, and then Lesson Picks is another um, subscription that I really like to have in terms of making things for the classroom. Um, you, they also have a lot of like fun digital features like their play tools where you can like spin a spinner. And um, again, I don't have time to get into all of these things. But these are just some of my favorite paid resources. Um, and my closing thought is that there a, I put a lot of information out here. Um, you're gonna get a lot of new activities and a lot of new tools to try. And for me, that really, I get easily overwhelmed. Um, so sometimes I watch sessions and I'm just like, oh my gosh, where do I even start? I can't do all of this stuff. If you're overwhelmed, you're not gonna be engaging to your student, right? So pick just one thing. Like I wanna start using GIFs. I'm not gonna make my own GIFs, but I'll download the Giphy extension. Awesome. Then once you're more comfortable with that, maybe you'll click back on the slide deck or you'll think, oh yeah, what was that tip? How did we make an Olivia Newton-John GIF? Um, so take one thing at a time. You don't have to reinvent what you're doing. If any of these ideas like stood out to you, like, oh, cool, I'm making books and slides or just watching YouTube videos, take one thing and um, don't get overwhelmed. That's easy to say, right? Um, so I swear I made, I updated this so that there would be a bit.ly link for you. Um, thank you so much. We only have one minute. Just enough time for you to catch this link if you didn't already get it. There it is.
Um, and so we don't really have time for questions. Um, so uh, the slides are at bit.ly, A-T-N-J, Gregory. And here's my um, handle, my email, my handles on social media. So if you do have any questions, please, please reach out. I love connecting with other people. Um, this basically connecting with other people on social media is how I've learned all this stuff that I just shared. So I take lots of inspiration and ideas from other people. So I love being connected with people because then I can ask you questions too. Um, so thank you so much, everybody. I see your comments in the chat and I'm so sorry about the, the bit.ly link being messed up. I'll put it in the chat again. Thanks, Sarah. And yeah. I will and I will look past the whole Star Wars blasphemy. But now I love Star Wars. <laughs> All right. Watch check in on your Twitter right now, the picture I put out there while you were talking. Oh no. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Oh, I see. I'm glad I didn't see that pop up. When I <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Everybody, thanks. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the day as Sarah's typing away. Sarah, you're in charge of the room, so it doesn't close until you close it. Okay, so I'm going to close it. And Serious business out. here. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Sarah.